I've been blind. But now I begin to see. I am betrayed. Dragon sickness. I've seen it before. I wish I had been able to talk to the, the Tolkien scholars about dragon sickness. I have a few questions for them. I think one of Tolkien's deepest feelings is uh, about the corrupting effect of, of gold. It creates greed and what Tolkien called dragon sickness. The idea that gold that a dragon has brooded on carries a, a curse. It's a theme Tolkien was especially drawn to. It shows up over and over again in the old Norse material and in old mythologies, and Tolkien was very familiar with them. There are several sagas where warriors are changed into dragons because of their covetousness and their love of gold. And the one with the greatest parallel to Thor and Oakenshield is in the Icelandic Gull Thoris saga. And Thorir, so very close to Thorin, is a Viking chief. Who uh, leads his companions to steal dragon's gold. Once he had the gold, his comrades notice that he's changing, that he's becoming greedy, bad-tempered, and difficult to deal with. And in the end, he's turned into a dragon. So this whole notion of too much greed will turn you into a dragon constantly crops up in Norse tales, Icelandic sagas. It's about the corrupting effect of gold. It creates miserliness, stinginess, refusing to let go of anything, and of course, flying into a complete rage, even if you lose one tiny infinitesimal fraction of what's yours. I will not part with a single coin. Not one piece of it. I remember saying to Fran they should share a line, Smaug and Thorin. And she said, yeah. And then we had to think of it. And it became, it, I loved the, I will not part with a single coin, not one piece of it. One of the most significant things for me was being able to go into the sound studio and watch Benedict voicing the dragon. I will not part with a single coin, not one piece of it. And so I was able to watch Benedict and just pick up a few of his sounds and the hissing sounds that he was making and the physicality that he was using to voice the dragon. I will not part with a single coin. And you can hear the almost sibilant S of the dragon coming out and the head turning this way and that as he says it. It's the echo, it's the serpent within him. And when we process his voice to sound like Smaug, it really ties in Thorin to the dragon sickness and the gold treasure and the dementia he's going through. I will not part with a single coin. To Bilbo's horror, Bilbo has lost his possible friend, you know, to the madness of greed. Towards the end of the shoot, when we did the scene where Thorin is swallowed by the gold, it was very much an organic process. It was a little bit abstract. I remember reading the stage direction, and it was just a single line that said, Thorin sees his reflection in a plate, and the dragon looks back at him. He realizes what he's become. That was it. I kept thinking, how am I going to shoot that? How am I going to shoot that? It looked OK on the page, but how do you actually do that? In the space of, you know, a minute and a half, however long the scene is, he has to go through a very intensive rehab and come out of it sane again. And I should also say he's all by himself too. He's not actually on a therapist's couch, he's just alone. And he's got to have this solo rehab in the space of a very short time. You're seeing the truth of who you are, let's just see now, take your time. It's hard to think to dramatise and the only way to really do it, I think, is to get inside his head and to actually make it very surreal. We tied some ropes around my feet and they built like a catwalk with a slope. The idea was that he was gonna just be walking through gold coins and slowly get deeper and he was gonna be sinking into it. And then as I got to this ramp, I was genuinely trying to get to the top of the ramp and couldn't. Get to the top, get to the top quickly now, go to the top. And I could get my fingers to the top and then they'd yank me back. And I didn't really have a clue what I was doing, I just was shooting material. Yeah, there you go. I knew he didn't know. <laughs> it's the sort of scene that will ultimately, you know, take what the best of what Richard gives us and re-edit in post-production. 
at one point, you know, some previs had been done um, around Thorin losing himself in the piles of gold in the treasure hall. And we were nervous about that because those gold simulations, as we knew from the desolation work that we'd done, you know, in the treasure hall, were very computationally expensive simulations to run. They take a certain amount of time. I just had lost my confidence in how well these digital coins were going to look. And so suddenly I was beginning to get very nervous about that. So you pretend to, you know, you're still thinking about it, is what you tell people, and you just try to push it back as long as you can, hoping that at some point, at three o'clock in the morning, you're going to wake up with a good idea. Hoping. We sort of painted ourselves into a corner, really, but it forced us to actually make the scene better. I suddenly remembered we have a hell of a great thing up our sleeve that we didn't even know about when we wrote these scripts. And I didn't even think about it, but we've got from film two that room where the statue was. It's got a golden floor. Because you know, we, we, And I thought, what a great image to have him walking on the solid gold floor. Because it would have hardened flat as glass. And I thought, Jesus, why, why aren't we using that? That's cool. And then he walks on this flat floor, there's no cool coins around, and he looks at these reflections, and maybe the thing sort of starts to slump, and it's, he's trying to get out, and he sort of swallows him. The sheer weight of Thorin's depression is enough to bend the surface of that gold. He has a sense of realisation, and he gets split in half into sort of two Thorins, and he sees the bad Thorin get consumed, leaving the good Thorin. If only rehab was that simple, but it wouldn't make for such good reality TV. So, hey.